Hey guys and welcome back to yet another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where I cover unused, hidden, and normally unseen content in video games. Now I never thought I would make a second video on Doki Doki Literature Club, but after such good feedback from the last video, here we are with part 2. And with all of that said, let's get back to finding some more Lost Bits. So in part 1, we covered various cut and unused artwork as well as many hidden secrets in the game's files. Well, it turns out there are a few more unused and hidden things that I missed. First off is an unused head pose for Natsuki in which she turns away from the player. Looks like it was meant to be used if one of the other characters said something to make her mad. Similarly, there is yet another unused angry expression this time for Yuri, as well as another unused expression in which Yuri is smiling but her eyes have huge purple pupils, similar to when her uh, unfortunate event occurs. Next is an unused font not seen in the game, labeled Y2, and appropriately named As I Lay Dying. It is believed that this font was likely to have been intended for Yuri's wheel poem. When compared side to side, we can see how similar, yet different, they really look. And with that, as of the making of this video, that is basically all of the unused content that anyone has found and officially confirmed. For the next part of this video, although not technically unseen, there are various easter eggs, poems, and other occurrences throughout the game, mostly in Act 2, that are either seen randomly or the player has a set percentage chance to see. So even if you've watched a playthrough of the game or have even played it yourself, chances are you probably haven't seen or noticed many of these. And as always in typical DDLC fashion, many of these are pretty weird. To get an idea for what I mean, let's start things off with an occurrence with Natsuki. In Act 2, after showing your poem to her and she doesn't like it, there's a 33% chance that after reading it, her eyes will quite literally pop out of their sockets. Similarly in the second act, on the third day, there's a 25% chance that when the player speaks to Natsuki near the closet, her normal mouth will be replaced in favor of a creepy, realistic looking one, in addition to her eyes being covered by some sporadic black pixels. Natsuki will also nonsensically say, Meebles, Sailcloth, Blindsight, Lifeline, Anon, Rectipitality, Faultlessly Offered, Sclerimolatia, Nade, Catholicate. I don't know if someone has found a meaning or reason to these words, but to me it seems like someone was just flipping through a dictionary and picking out random words. After creating your poem in the first day of Act 2, there is a 1 in 6 chance that a creepy, half-stained, half-seemingly burnt page featuring Sayori's head with pupilless, red-underlined eyes will scroll down while some ominous, distorted music plays in the background. This is obviously a reminder of what had just occurred when Sayori was hanging out with the protagonist just moments before. One of the rarest possible occurrences in the game happens during the poem word selection part in Act 2. If you're lucky enough, there is a 1 in 101, or less than 1% chance that Yuri's normal sticker will be replaced with a distorted, creepier one when selecting one of the words related to her. This one just reeks of some stereotypical creepypasta thumbnails that I've seen on YouTube. Also in Act 2, after closing one of the secret poems, there's a 33% chance that the game will now have a red filter and the sound will be muffled. The screen will then turn black until the player clicks in order to bring the game back to normal. In the same spot, there is also a 33% chance that the player's cursor will turn into a glitched part of Sayori's artwork for a moment. Speaking of Sayori, there is a 14.28% chance that any time the classroom background is loaded in Act 2, one of the posters will be replaced with Sayori's death scene. Just another subtle reminder for Monica in case you forgot what just happened. Okay, pretty much all of these are in Act 2, so I'll just stop referencing it. In the act, there is also a 1 in 3 chance that Monica will enter the scene in her glitched phase, and there's also a 1 in 3 chance that Yuri will welcome the player at the start of the day without a head. After one of the poem minigames, there is a 1 in 16 chance that a sheet of corrupted Sayori images will flash between two color schemes for a brief moment. Next, there is a 2% chance that whenever you try to access the menus, this weird watercolor style portrait of Monica will flash on the screen for a split second. It's unclear whether the red blotches on this painting are indeed paint or blood. Lastly, there are two special occurrences that happen when loading the game. The first one will replace the typical disclaimer text when booting up the game that normally says that the game isn't suitable for children or for those who are easily disturbed. There's a 25% chance that this message will be replaced by one of the following quotes. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. I missed you. Play with me. It's just a game. Mostly, this, null, I have granted kids to hell, it was only partially your fault, 
Don't forget to back up Monica's character file. This game is not suitable for children or for those who are easily dismembered. Or lastly, PM died for this, which may be a reference to the Project M mod for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which Dan Salvato, the creator of this game, was also a developer for. As you saw, most of these replacement messages are pretty ominous and obviously coming from Monica. And for the last random happening, again at the menu, when booting up the game with an Act 2 save, there is a very small 1 in 64 chance that instead of the normal home screen, you will start with a backwards end screen, then a black and white menu, with no background and more distorted music. You'll also notice that all of the girls are missing their eyes. There also aren't any buttons that can be seen or pressed, so you won't really be able to start the game, so the only real option is to close the game and reset. When you do close the game, after a short delay, the screen will zoom into Monica's face quickly before closing. Similarly to the previous occurrences, each time you play through the game, three special poems can be seen through the run. These three are randomly selected out of a possible 11 poems, so again, unless you've played the game over several times, chances are you haven't seen most of these. These poems include a drawing of Sayori hanging out, text saying, can you hear me, and a mostly redacted poem with the letters spelling out, nothing is real, among some others. Some of them contain some pretty dark themes and words, so in the interest of monetization, I will have to leave them out. But if you do want to check them out and the rest of the poems that I didn't mention, I will leave a link to the site where most of the information for this video was taken from, and you can see them there. At the end of the game after Act 4, you are given the option to stay with Monica. She will then start up random different dialogue themes, and there are over like 20 that can occur. But I just wanted to go over two of the ones that I thought were the most interesting. The first one occurs if the player is streaming or recording the game using either OBS or XSplit. Monica will say, Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Um, hi everyone. Sorry I can't read your comments from here, but do you mind telling your friend it's a little rude to start recording me without warning? Then eventually she will try to jump scare both the player and the audience if the game is being streamed. There's also a chance that Monica will start talking about Super Smash Bros. She will say, Hey, have you heard of a game called Super Smash? Wait, what? I was just spacing out and started talking for some reason. Was I programmed to talk about that? Because I have no idea what that is. Sometimes I feel like I'm not in control and it's kind of scary. But if you have some way to contact the people who created me, maybe they'll know why I started saying that. This again is a reference to the fact that Dan Salvato has worked on several mods for Super Smash Bros. Melee and Brawl, such as the 20XXTE mod and Project M. And with that concludes this second Lost Bits video on some more content in Doki Doki Literature Club, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe and click on the card right here to check out the first DDLC Lost Bits video, I am sure you'll like it as well. And if you'd like to stay even more up to date with me and the channel, consider following me on other social media sites such as Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, as well as joining my Discord server which will all be linked in the description below. And as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.